Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with sourdough bread. That's right, welcome to part two of this two-part series where we finally get to make the bread. And unlike part one where we made the starter, this part is much, much faster and easier. Okay, this only takes two days. But the good news is, while it does take some time, there's almost no work involved. Okay, as you'll see, sourdough bread pretty much makes itself. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the starter we already started in part one. And to start our dough, we'll go ahead and measure out exactly 100 grams of that into this bowl. And of course, as usual, all the exact measurements will be on the blog. And besides that, we're also gonna need some cold fresh water. Tap is fine, but again, if you wanna play it safe, you can use bottled. And then we're also gonna need some kosher salt or any other kind of pure salt. Although I'm pretty sure there were a few specks of black pepper in there. But that's okay, that will happen. And then last but not least, we will add our bread flour. And like all the great bakers, I weighed it out and transferred it in using a paper plate. And then once the flour's in, we'll go ahead and mix this up using a wooden spoon. And the bad news here is this stuff is so sticky, we really can't knead it. But the good news is, this stuff is so sticky, we're not gonna be able to knead it. So what I'm getting at is there's no kneading involved here which is why I've always considered these very easy breads to make. So we will simply mix that all together into a very, very, very sticky dough, being sure to incorporate any flour from the side of the bowl. And then what we're gonna do here once this has been very thoroughly mixed is cover it and let it ferment for about four hours or so at between 70 and 75 degrees. And as usual, I'm just gonna use my turned off oven set to the proofing mode. And that's gonna be pretty much it for this step except for one optional step in the middle if you want. After two hours, we can pull it out and give it a fold. And I forget exactly what this does, but it's fun, so I think we should do it. And to do that, we're gonna to wanna to wet our hands first so we don't stick to the dough. And all we need to do is grab it and stretch it and kind of fold it over like this. And we'll do that three or four times. And by the way, I've skipped this step before and haven't really noticed a big difference. But having said that, it is fun so I suggest you do it. Since other than the great bread, that's kind of the point here. And once that's set, we'll go ahead and wrap it back up and we'll let that continue to ferment at 70 to 75 degrees for another couple hours. And while we're waiting, we'll get ready for the next step by prepping our banneton. Oh yes, this basket we make the sourdough bread in is called a banneton. And what we'll do to prep this is sprinkle it very generously with rice flour. Okay, some people like to use a combination of rice flour and regular flour, but I think just pure rice flour works best. And I did say generous. So go around slowly and thoughtfully. And as you can see, those ridges in the wood sort of hold on to it. And by the way, if you don't have one of these or don't want to buy one, in the blog post, I'm going to explain how to do it without one, which works totally fine. But anyway, we're going to cover that thoroughly in rice flour and set it aside. And at this point, we'll go ahead and pull out our dough. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. And what we'll want to do is scrape that onto a lightly floured surface. Not rice flour, just regular flour. And what follows is what I would say is the only tricky part of this operation. Because what we need to do besides knock out all the air, which is going to pretty much happen as soon as you scrape it onto the table, is form this into a ball that has a smooth, unbroken surface. So using just enough flour as necessary, we will somehow, some way, get this into a ball shape. And on a scale of one to 10, my sourdough ball shaping skills are about a three, maybe four on a good day. But as they say in golf, there's no pictures on the scorecard. So we'll do whatever we need to do to somehow get it into some ball shape like this with hopefully an unbroken smooth surface. Okay, that's kind of key. And once we've gotten to that point, we'll stop and transfer that smooth side down into the banneton. And as we do this, we want to kind of pinch and pull up the top so it doesn't spread out too fast. And we'll do that for about a half a minute until we've kind of sealed all that dough together on the top. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and sprinkle a little flour over the top. Rice or regular, really doesn't matter. And then what we're gonna do for the next 12 hours or so is retard the dough. Yes, that's what it's called. We're actually gonna cover this or put it in a bag and we're gonna transfer that into the fridge overnight to basically intentionally slow down the fermentation process. And then the next day we will pull it out, unwrap it, and take a look at it. And hopefully it's not sticking to your banneton, which mine wasn't. 
And that's it. We're almost ready to bake in like three or four hours. So what we'll do at this point is proof it again at 70 to 75 degrees, which again, I'm going to do in my oven, which has a proofing setting. And I do like to put a pan of hot water in there. So we have a little bit of humidity. And we're going to let that dough rise in the banneton from anywhere between three and five hours or until it's ready. And this is how you're going to check. Okay, if we poke it with our finger and it holds an indentation and ever so slightly springs back, it's ready. Okay, if we poke it and it springs right back and fills back in, it's not ready. Okay, so give it a poke. And if that mark stays in with just a little bit of spring back, we are ready to preheat our oven to 450 degrees and finally make some bread. And while we are waiting for our oven to get hot, we'll want to transfer this onto our sheet pan. And so it doesn't stick to our hand when we flip it. I like to sprinkle a little flour on at this point. And then what we'll do is place our hand over like this, and then carefully, but with no fear, transfer this onto a parchment lined sheet pan. And then once that's on the pan, we'll take a brush and brush off any excess rice flour, very gently, of course. Okay, there's always gonna be a little bit attached to the surface, but any spots where you think there's too much, go ahead and brush it off. And by the way, because this is such a wet dough, it is definitely gonna flatten out on the pan. Okay, but that's normal, don't worry. That's what it's supposed to look like. And then what we'll do once our oven's hot, before we pop it in, is two things. We'll go ahead and score the top with a razor or a very sharp knife to form what some bakers call the ear. Although I should say, cutting the ear is optional. Right, you are after all the Vincent Van Gogh of your homemade sourdough. But I think it looks nice, and they say it helps improve the texture of the bread. And then last but not least, before we pop this in, we're gonna spray the surface with plain water Okay, not too much, but make sure the entire surface is damp. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes, or until it looks like this. Oh yeah, that's a nice looking loaf of bread. And by the way, all you pizza stone people, pay attention. You do not need a pizza stone. Okay, check it out. We have a perfect bottom that looks exactly the same. So as you can see, just a sheet pan works perfectly. And then what we'll do is transfer that to a rack to cool all the way down to room temp. Okay, do not cut this bread open hot. You will lose too much moisture. So we will definitely let that cool down to room temp, at which point we will grab a knife and slice it up and enjoy the greatest bread you've ever tasted. Or at least that's what you're going to tell people. And as you can see, in my opinion, we have the perfect size bubbles. All right, they're big enough to keep the texture light but not so big that our peanut butter and jelly fall through. Okay, nobody wants that. So I sliced that up and went in for the official taste, after spreading on some butter, of course. And that, my friends, was truly an amazing bite of bread. Just so flavorful, the perfect amount of tanginess, not too sour, just right there, and just so, so superior to anything you'll ever get in a store. Unless you live next to a really good bakery that does sourdough, which in that case, it'd be about the same. But you know what, you made it. And you really can't underestimate the level of pleasure and satisfaction this is gonna provide. This really is a unique and one of a kind experience. But anyway, that's it, how to make your own sourdough bread. To all the people out there that are saying that's too much trouble, that's too much work, that takes too much time. Well, to all those people I just have to say, I really think you're missing the point of life. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.